Blessed day guys and peace be upon you this morning. So in this video, we're going to learn how to configure dynamic network address translation or NAT using Cisco Packet Tracer. Just like in the previous video, we learned how to configure static NAT, okay? And we were using this router as the NAT server to translate the private IP address into the public IP address, okay? All right, so. So you have to make sure that for you to access the internet, then you have to use the private, I mean the public IP address. You cannot access the internet via the private IP address. That's why NAT is here, okay? All right, so I'll open our uh, Google, Google spreadsheet. I'll let you know that today we're in number 13, part two, dynamic network address translation, okay? All right. So as you can see this diagram here is the same diagram that I used in the previous configuration of static NAT okay and I'll just open our notepad to start uh, the steps. So the first step is always uh, to draw the topology we decorate and comment. So as you can see I have a topology consisting of how many routers? Two routers, one switch, two computers and a server okay all right and I made the comments like this one the network between the two routers is this one the network in this land is this one and the network here is this one okay all right and this one is the NAT route okay all right make sure you're using 2911 router switch okay okay so the second step is to configure IP address to the router's interfaces and configure OSPF so guys I have already configured I, I mean IP addresses to these interfaces and the computer so for example this is gig01 and this is gig 00 so if i try to hover over there you can see gig 00 is 200 150.1 slash 24 while gig 01 is 102 168.20.1 slash 24 so the appearance of gig 01 here is the default gateway of these computers you can see that is 102 168.20.10 and the default gateway is that one when I hover over this router here, you can see the gig 00 is 200 150.20/24. Okay? And the gig 01 is 888.1, which is the default gateway of the Google web server which has an IP address of 8888, okay? All right. So we're being told here, we're being told here to configure OSPF, okay? We need to configure OSPF because we have two routers. When we have two routers, we have to advertise the routes. So I'll just go to this router, come to uh, CLI, and I say enable uh, config T. And we just say router OSPF, OSPF, let's say uh, 45, okay? With the process ID of 45, then give the router ID of, uh, let's say 4.3.2.1, okay? Anything that you like that can suit the router ID, then you advertise the network. So the first network that I advertise is 200.100.50.0 with, with a market mask of 0 .0 0.0.0.255 area 0. Okay. Then the second network that uh, I will advertise is this network, which is uh, the network is a uh, 102.168.20.0 welcome mask of 0.0.0.255 area 0 exit and do right so we're done configuring OSPF there when you go to this router we'll be test this network and this network so I do it very fast to save time so exit uh, router OSPF 45 uh, router ID to be uh, let's say 5.1.2.4 something like that okay then uh, the network that you want to advertise is like 8.8.8.0 with a welcome mask of 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255 area 0 another network is uh, um, it's 200 200.100.15 that one exit and do it. so let's wait until they form uh sorry let's wait until they form neighbors then we try to ping if we can reach the uh, web server from the inside network you can see it has formed neighbor with this router which was having idea 4321 it was this route okay so let's try to ping google ip address which is uh and uh it's uh 
pin 8.8.8.8. So it should ping because we have successfully uh, configured OSPF as the routing protocol. Okay. All right. So that's successful. I'll go back to our, our notepad to check, ping the Google server, test out the path, and check if there are any translations. So I'll skip the trust route or I just do it very, very fast. So just say trust route 8.8.8.8. .8 so you see, it first goes to the default gateway. Then it goes to the P address of the next stop, which is the P address of this interface of the ISP router. Then finally to the destination. Then on the notepad side, we've been told to check if there are any translations. So we check translations on the router, not on the computers. Okay. So we just say end, then show IP not translations. You can see there are no results as per now. Okay. Because we've not configured NAT. So guys, basically, let's embark on configuring NAT. So this is all about creating uh, configuring NAT. So we've been told to create a standard access control list to permit the inside uh, subnet. Okay. All right. So let's go. Just go here and the steps of configuring um, a dynamic NAT. We need to first. You need to create a standard access control list to permit the inside subnet that you want to translate. So, for example, we just say access access list uh, standard access list uh, event fifteen. Okay. Permit permit uh, the subnet one the subnet is uh the subnet here is uh one and two one and two one six eight dot twenty dot zero uh with the wildcard mask of zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five and you eat it okay that's all then then uh we need to configure dynamic NAT to do many to many translation remember in static NAT, it was all about one to one. We we translate one private IP address into one public IP address. Okay. So in this uh, scenario of dynamic NAT, we're going to translate many to many. Okay. We can just we can can translate one to many or many to many. Okay. All right. So that's what we want to do here. All right. So how do we create um? How do we configure NAT, dynamic NAT? We create pools because it's many to many. Now we create what's called pools. Okay, so we just say IP NAT inside inside uh, source. Uh, then let me sorry IP NAT then I query yes IP NAT pool. Okay, then when you query, you give the word. Okay. Let's say uh, dynamic NAT. NAT. Yes, I don't want to give it a uh, huge name. DNY, D, D, DY, DY NAT. Okay? okay. Dynamic NAT. Then you try to query. Now you give the start IP address. Okay. I want uh, the pool to contain IP address like uh, 200 dot 100 uh, dot 100 dot 50 dot 1 then i query again and i p address to 200 dot uh, 100 dot 50 to 10 okay so when you're giving a pool make sure you use the public ip address which is here okay all right so that's my pool you can see from 50.1 to 50.10 that's where my pools are okay many to many okay Alright, so from 1 to 10 will be used for translation. Then we query, we give the net mask. Net mask. Net mask is uh, the subnet mask. Okay, 255.255.255.0. Okay, all of these have a subnet mask of here. Okay, 255, which was here. You can see here. Alright, then we just hit enter. Alright, so guys, we've created a uh, not here and we've created a uh, access control list here so we need to bind this NAT with the access control list so that that NAT can use this one okay 
All right, so let's do that very, very fast. When I go back to our notepad, you can see that's what is hashed here. Bind SCA to NAT and configure interfaces to use uh, as NAT inside and NAT outside. So we just say IP NAT uh, inside. Then we query list uh, list. Oops. Uh, IP NAT inside source we query list uh, the list is access control list okay list 15 15 then i query again pool we give the name of the pool the name of the pool was this one the dy nut okay and i paste then i query again uh, uh then i query again and i just it just hit enter okay all right so we we buy we did to buy we did bind uh the nut with the access control list okay all right so it's pretty much simple uh, configuration guys i just made it complex because i was trying to query to see the available options so the first thing was to do uh, to do was to create the access control list and permit your, your source okay then you need to create the NAT, okay? Give the name of the NAT, a pool of the NAT, okay? And give the ranges and the SNET mask, which is the subnet mask. And finally, bind the NAT with the pool, okay? All right. And now what we're going, going to do is to configure interfaces as NAT inside and NAT outside. So we have to make sure that this is uh, this zero one is NAT inside. Uh, this is gig00 not outside. So when I say here interface gig 0 just say IP not outside. Exit gig01 IP not inside. Exit and do it. So we're done configuring that. So when I go back to our notepad, ping again, test out, I check if there are any translation. The first thing I do, I take if there are any translations. Uh, show IP NAT translations. You see, there are no results. Okay. All right. So when I go back to this uh, PC here and try to ping, try to uh, press out and also ping. Then I go back to this router and do show IP net translations. You can see there are some translations that have occurred. Okay, you can see they are using uh, that one 200, 200, 150 dot one. Okay, so if I can try to ping from this second PC, uh, ping 8.8.8.8. Then I go to check the translation. You can see it, it will take another number, okay? It will take another number. You see, it has taken 50.2, okay? All right. So thank you so much, guys. I believe this video has really helped you now to configure dynamic NAT. So when, so when we meet next, we're going to do a part, which is a port address translation, okay? All right, so thank you so much. Please subscribe to this channel. Like this video, share with the friends, and let uh, let me know whether you have any doubt, comment, or suggestion in the comment section. Bye, and see you again in the next post.